What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we are going to be reacting to Bill McKenna's Q&A from Ringside Fest 2019 up in New York City. If you guys do not know who Bill McKenna is or what Ringside Fest is, it is basically uh, where Ringside Collectibles throws sort of like a little con where they have superstars come in, they show off new action figures, and they do a Q&A with Bill McKenna, who is the lead designer at Mattel. He is the one responsible for all of our elite WWE action figures, and he is a big guy over at Mattel who creates the figure. So basically what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to watch that Q&A and I am going to react to his answers that he gives to the questions that Sam Roberts gives and just sort of give you my feedback on what I think he means and, you know, sort of what the details of the future ensure about some certain figures we're going to be getting, things of that nature and all of that. So basically I'm going to play the interview. I will be stopping this interview multiple times, guys. So if you're going to get annoyed by me stopping the video or whatever, you can check out the full interview or whatever, but uh, we will pretty much go through the full interview here but if you'd like to watch it in full on your own there is a link in the description and definitely go subscribe to ringside collectibles for more uh you know content like this as well as using promo code md toys on their website to save 10 percent on all of your epic wwe action figures but i also want to give huge credit to ringside collectibles for this video because they are the ones that recorded this they're the ones that got the footage for this so huge shout out to ringside collectibles for that they own all of the footage we are about to watch for this Q&A from Bill. Let's go ahead and tee it up, watch the video, and react to Bill McKenna's Q&A at Ringside Fest 2019. Caster Sam Roberts here at the glorious Ringside Fest for Ringside Collectibles with the infamous Bill McKenna, head elite designer from Mattel. Is that right? That, that works. That works, right? That works. We're, instead, what we're going to address is your questions. We've been collecting uh, questions from all the members at the message boards at WrestlingFigures.com or WrestlingFigs.com. And I figure I'll see if I can make you sweat a little bit. That won't be hard. I sweat very easily. That's what I've heard. Even with the hat on, sir. So. Um, let's start with this one. Sure. Are there any other elite Shawn Michaels figures in the works after what we've seen here, which is the ultimate edition Shawn Michaels? Uh, very likely. Shawn Michaels is a performer that we can make a lot of figures on with a lot of different looks, a lot of different sculpts, a lot of varieties. So when it comes time to include like a, a high level legend cat talent in a lineup, Shawn Michaels is always one that is always right near the top of, of choices. So it's very likely as long as we have the license. Sure. I know you're an NXT guy. What about an NXT coach, Shawn Michaels? That's always a possibility. All right, guys, so the first question is is if there are any Shawn Michaels elites in the works. And the way Bill answered this, I don't think there are going to be any current ones, like, you know, in the works right now, like, currently working on is how it sounded like. Like, there's none that are in production for this year or anything coming really, really soon. However, it did sound like, you know, they are, uh, he's always on the table because he's such a highly demanded figure and he's such a highly demanded guy. And there's so many looks of Shawn we haven't gotten, but uh, it does sound like uh, we will be getting some in the future, obviously, because they, has, they still have the license and that's what bill was saying there so it is nice to hear i'm always down for any Shawn michaels elite so that's that's pretty fire right there also i don't think an nxt coach Shawn michaels will be happening however uh, it'd be cool to get a bald head Shawn michaels maybe is it still safe to say the retro line is just on hiatus and not dead it's not dead it is on hiatus i don't know you know i'm sure if, if the status changes i'll know and then i could maybe you know release the information that there's been a change but right now it is on hiatus so this is for all the big retro line collectors out there it does seem that you know they're trying really hard to get that line back out and i think that's really important to you know the people that collected that it did seem like a lot of people were upset about that um i was pretty upset about it i mean i like those figures but it's not my main priority my main priority is the elite figures however um it does sound like they're trying to get those figures back and that would be really cool i do have my own mock collection on the wall so that would be cool and i would be interested in seeing that line return for sure since nxt is now on the USA Network. Does that mean we'll see more of those wrestlers in mainline elite waves? Uh, I don't think because it's been on uh, the USA, we were always planning on having NXT talent in the elite in the elite lineups because a lot of times that's where you get your new talent. You know, if you already have, if you're someone that only buys a figure of like one guy, one figure per person, or one you know male or female, with the NXT, you're kind of that's where you're getting the people that are, I already have a figure of this person, but I don't have this person. And, you know, nine times out of ten, that character's debuting in NXT. So, yeah, going forward, NXT talent will continue to be well represented in the Elite line. I would also have to imagine if you start working on everybody when they're in NXT, it makes it a lot easier to get a figure out quicker once they debut on the main roster. Yes, in a lot of instances, it'll be planned as an NXT, and by the time it's on the store shelves, they're on the main rosters. So. 
So basically, Bill is saying here that they are already trying to incorporate NXT, and they've always tried to do that. It is not just because they're on USA now. I mean, they've had Finn Balor from NXT in the main elite line when he was in NXT. They've done this with multiple guys before, and Velveteen Dreams had two elites now, and he's not even on the main roster yet. So they definitely incorporate the NXT line. I think it's going to be something they continue the trend of, which I am always happy with. You know, not always have to be exclusives and stuff. So I think that's very important to us collectors to get those guys. Ghostbusters, it seemed to do better than most of us initially. Initially, well, most of them, I thought it would do well, but most people initially expected. Are there any plans for other uh, waves or crossovers with pop culture licenses, obviously besides the Masters of the Universe, which we've seen? Yeah, Masters of the Universe is our, our big push uh, for 2020 in that category of, like, mashups. Ghostbusters, I think Hasbro now has that Master Toy license, so we were only able to get out one series of it, but I'm glad we were able to get out that one before... They took over, and good luck to them with that license. It's something, you know, you know, even with, like, the zombies was sort of a cross. You know, some, if something looks like it makes sense and we think we can, you know, get some legs under it, then we will, we will invest in it. I honestly don't know how well the Ghostbusters did. I never got them in my area, so I can't say if they shell formed or not, but it did seem like a lot of people were tracking them down, and those figures ended up being a lot cooler than I expected them to be. However, I'm not very big on fantasy shit in my wrestling and my wrestling figures, so I'm not really big on that. You know, I don't want to see Masters of the Universe and stuff. I mean, I'll probably grab the John Cena or something just because I'm a John Cena mark and stuff, guys, but uh, I, I'm not big on the pop culture stuff. However, I do know there's a market for stuff like that. Like, I understand it, and if there's money to be made in it, then I understand Mattel going that route and trying to do something to get those folks to buy it. How about this one? The best of Attitude Era. Has that line been canceled, or did it just run its course? Uh, it kind of ran its course. It's something where if there were future considerations for that line, we would work them in elsewhere. How many figures did we get in the Attitude Era line? We had Chris Jericho, The Rock, Stone Cold, and Triple H, right? I think there was only four figures in that line. I did hate that, guys, because I really did enjoy all four of those figures. I liked that they were kind of a backstage attire for pretty much all of those guys. And it was pretty cool. I liked that wave a lot. I would like to see more waves like that that have different, uh, you know, like eras. Like Ruthless Aggression Era would be a really big deal. I hope we get that down the line. That would be excellent. Bill, I hope you're watching. Go ahead and make that line, please. Plenty of different characters, plenty of different looks you could do for that Ruthless Aggression wave. Don't care if it's ringside exclusive. Whatever the case is, they definitely need to do that. I would definitely buy out a Ruthless Aggression wave. Will we ever get the light heavyweight championship, or I guess the WCW Cruiserweight Championship as well? It's possible. It's just finding out the right talent to include it with. And so when we do a uh, like a flashback talent or, or a Legends talent that held that title, that's something that we would consider. Mm -hmm. For both? For both. Okay. There are plenty of guys that they could make for that light heavyweight championship, as well as the cruiserweight championship guys. They could have done that with the Hall of Champions. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe they couldn't get the belt made or not, but I know in the Hall of Champions, Eddie Guerrero, on the back of the packaging, they actually have an image of of the you know the WCW Cruiserweight Championship so I'm not sure why we didn't get it with the Hall of Champions Eddie Guerrero but maybe they'll incorporate it down the line plenty of cool attires they could have done I know later on in the video he mentions Chris Jericho so maybe that that was probably what the plan was but we didn't ever get it so uh, are we gonna get Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish new elites since we got Elite 71 and Elite 72 Adam Cole and Roderick Strong the logic would seem to dictate that. <laughs> Hell yes. I was actually mentioning this the other day, did I not? I think I mentioned this in my review, possibly. I talked about them be doing a two-pack elite of Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Hopefully it's in the War Games attire, but then you say, well, well, Brad, why, why the hell did we make Adam Cole Elite 71 in the War Games attire? Would have been a perfect addition there. They all four would have been in the War Games attire. They didn't do that, but I think that uh, him saying it that way, guys, I think it's definitely in the works. Is Jeff Jarrett finally available, or did he still not sign a Legends deal? I haven't heard an update. So it's one of those situations where if 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 he's if I if I hear word that I can work on Jeff Jarrett, like work will start that day. I think I saw in another Mattel interview with a different employee or something that uh, Jeff Jarrett is still not under a Legends deal, so they still can't make figures of him just yet. Also, I think they uh, did mention that Hulk Hogan is still a little bit away from making figures just yet, so it's not quite the time to make it. But I'm sure uh, sooner or later we are going to get Jeff Jeff Jarrett and Hulk Hogan, uh, presumably. What's the status of the Retro Fest line? Uh, that has run its course. Short and to the point. I like it. Uh, I, I hate that. You know, that Retro Fest line was a lot of opportunities to get some cool guys out of there. I'm glad that we got like Iron Sheik and Ric Flair and some other guys out of that line and New Mr. Perfect. So I like that line for the time being. It just kind of seemed like they shelf formed a little bit. Maybe it wasn't executed as well as possible. Or maybe GameStop just isn't the store for those. But I think that uh, something like Toys R Us would have been better for those figures or something. But I do hate to see that line go. Uh, what was your favorite figure that you worked on and saw released this year? Besides Asuka and Nakamura in red pants. Okay, I think that's... Uh, it says there. It says that's, you know. 
Okay, there might be some some uh, mocking behind that question, right. but I don't know. Um, it's, well, it seems to follow the, the Kyrie saying, just because there's so much uh, so much work involved in that and getting that to a level where we could, you know, release that, meet the, the cost. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a budget for each wave and making sure that each wave sort of balances the budget with a figure that complex with so much deco and new tooling, being able to figure out how to do that. It was a lot of work, but I think at the end of the day, the, the result is uh, one of the best figures we have on the display. Here. That's something that's very interesting to me. I wonder if like every elite line, like 71 has a certain budget, then 72 has a certain budget, or is every main elite line have the same budget? Or is it like the Attitude Era budget is lower than the ringside exclusive budget? You see what I'm saying? I wonder what the details of that are. I'm sure we'll never know those answers because, you know, that's kind of private business. But that is something that I would definitely like to know. Also, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, he's passionate about his work as far as, you know, he's excited about figures, you know. You know, that's a big thing with like, you know, it seems like WWE, the reason they don't really give us the great stuff anymore is like they're not really excited, guys. It's just a job to them. So it's cool to see that Bill actually gives a damn about what he's doing. And, you know, he puts a lot of effort in and, you know, he tries his best with the budget to work around it and do his job. Why has it taken so long to release a new R-Truth figure? And is it coming soon? A lot of it depends on TV exposure. And for the past few years, our truth really hasn't been on TV in uh, a lot until like the 24-7 run with the 24-7 title. So something like that is something that will increase his likelihood to be included in the line. It's coming soon? Logic would seem to dictate. Okay. Well, we do know that R-Truth is confirmed for, I think, Elite Series 78, so it's really not that soon unless they push it back. You know, there, there is a chance that he could fall, you know, further and further closer to us. You know, we're only on Elite Series 72, and 78 is a little ways away, but uh, maybe, again, he can bump up to 75 or 6, depending on how full those waves are. But I think it's pretty cool. He's saying that, like, you know, if you're involved in a big-time storyline, the more likely you are to be made into a figure, and I think that it's definitely over time for an R-Truth Elite figure, and I'm glad that it's coming soon because we, we know it's coming soon, so that's not any new NWO figures planned to come out in the next year or so? Nothing in the next few months, just based on what we have on the uh, display. But we're always, you know, if the opportunity presents itself and it makes sense. I know it's kind of like the generic answer, but... Like, nothing immediate, nothing but the, planned right nothing now. planned immediately. Yeah. I feel like we've gotten a lot of NWO figures. I know that there's still a lot more to be made, but I think the next NWO figure they need to make is the Hollywood Hulk Hogan, so I think they need to wait and wait on it and then release that NWO Hulk Hogan on us, and I think that would be a really big one. I think that is the one they need to wait on, you know, build that up, build that up, and then finally release it maybe as a ringside exclusive and just blow the whole world up on fire. I think that's what they're probably going to do. And I project, I bet we have either a render or a full, like, mock-up image of a NWO Hulk Hogan. I think we're going to have one by the end of 2020. So I think we're really close to a Hulk Hogan NWO. What's your favorite and least favorite part of the design process? My favorite my favorite moment is always when you get like the first, it's called an SAS sample, which is like the first um, uh, sample with the with the full deco. And you that's the one we evaluate to see if it's, um, you know, if there's any mistakes or changes you want to make. And that absolutely blows my mind that sometimes they get these samples and then they still release them. Like, there are some instances, guys, where I can't believe that they actually let it go. Like, uh, I know that some of the design choices just blow my mind sometimes. You know, we talk about them all the time. Some of the, you know, some of the choices they make for designs and accessories and stuff of that nature. And, you know, it's just kind of hard. It's just hilarious that they actually, you know, get the sample in and they still evaluate and they're like, yeah, go ahead and release it. When you get one that's like, and using the Kyrie Sane, and it's a really complex figure. And the first time, the first sample from the factory was perfect. Like when you get something like that, where it's like, it's almost like Christmas. It's like this, and it's I think like you're responsible for like willing this into existence in, in some way. That's the greatest feeling. The worst feeling I think is just, uh, just the, the cost challenges are always tricky. They're no fun, but you gotta, you got, it's an unavoidable part of the process. You know, I'm, we're in this to make money for the, for Mattel. I have to make a certain amount of money for the company and balancing that with like, my want to include everything with the figure, with you know being a Mattel employee whose job, and I'm getting paid to make a product that makes money for the company. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. I think that Bill definitely does care about what he's doing. I think that he definitely cares about his job and you know all the process and everything like that. You can tell that he's passionate about his work, and he's saying that you know when he gets a a sample back and there's no changes that need to be made, that's his favorite part is when it just goes to plan and everything turns out perfectly. And he loves that you know he is responsible for creating something that we love so much and. I, I really respect that. I think that's awesome. And another thing I did want to mention is I wonder like if he actually does have to have a certain amount of money he has to make. I know that there's budgets for each wave and stuff, and he has to 
work around that. That's a part of just his job, kind of being a designer and a manager. You know, not only do you want to make a badass looking figure, but you have to make a badass looking figure that, you know, works and makes a profit for Mattel itself. And I definitely understand both of it. You know, I understand both sides. My mom owns a business. I know how business operates. I know that you have to make stuff that's that's awesome. You have to get stuff that's awesome, but it also has to make sense from a business perspective. You can't just lose money on everything. So I definitely understand both sides of the coin where you got to make something cool, but you also have to fit it in the budget. If you're making an elite Matt Riddle, mm -hmm. will it come with removable flip-flops? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it will. Don't worry, it will. Bill being very, you know, he's guaranteeing that we're getting removable flip-flops. I bet that this figure is definitely in the works already. I think that an Elite Matt Riddle is definitely already underway, maybe in the basic attire, maybe in a cooler attire. I'm not sure, but it does definitely seems like there is a Matt Riddle in the works, and I'm going to hold him to that. We better get those removable flip-flops. I will also want a, you know, little cloth goods long sleeve jacket possibly, or, you know, a little long sleeve shirt, and we better get a removable hat. You better do it, bro. Can you speak on the Ultimate Edition character selection process? Uh, sure, we try to um, pick like um, like main event talent uh, with with uh, the widest possible appeal, and then one character would be from the present day, and one character would be from um, sort of like a like a legends or a flashback sort of, just because we know there are people that only buy, you know, the classic talent, and there's only people that buy present day. So if you're gonna, we want to make sure that we're covering all of, you know as many bases as possible when we release those because they're thirty dollars investment in a figure. It's not an insignificant amount of money. We want to make sure that not only is it the highest quality we can provide, but it appeals to the, the broadest uh, customer base. I think this is a really smart way of doing the Ultimate Edition line. I think this is the most genius way to do it, guys, because you do want to attract to both audiences of the Legendary and the current roster, guys. And we've seen it already. You know, we had Ultimate Warrior and Ronda. We had Shinsuke and Brett. We had Finn Balor and Triple H. The next ones are going to be Becky Lynch and Ric Flair. And I think the or the next ones are going to be HBK and Brock Lesnar. And then the next two are going to be Becky Lynch and, uh, and Ric Flair. So it's, it is a cool trend to see continue. And I can't wait to see what the next Ultimate Edition figures are going to be. Are the Elite 2 packs going to be continuing? They are being developed for 2020 as a continuation. There is, they, we have the AJ and Finn one that's on sale now, and there are at least at least two others planned for this year. I think there might be a third. Oh, great. Yeah. For this year, for 2019? Yeah. Oh, no, for, for 2020. 2020. Yeah, for this year, for me, this year is 2020. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Everything gotcha. here is 2020. Well, guys, we do know that the Rey Mysterio and Samoa Joe WrestleMania 35 two-pack is coming soon, you know, with Joe with the new haircut and then the Mysterio-themed Rey Mysterio. So we do know that one's coming. And then what he said about Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish in the War Games attire or whatever he said earlier, you know, getting new elites of those, I do think that that is another two-pack of elites that is coming soon. So that is what my guesses would be there. I could be wrong, obviously, but we do know Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio is coming. And then my guess would be, based off his earlier answer, I think that that Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish are everything but announced. I think they're definitely coming and I think that's the figures he's talking about he even mentioned maybe a third elite pack as well which excites me are there any new play sets in the works I know of at least one I'm not uh, two actually yeah but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about them but there are two they're at least in the works yeah there are yeah, two two like uh, two place two play sets Wow all right, Brad, this definitely excites me. It seems like uh, there's something big because he says, I know of one, and then he said actually two. So it sounds like both of those are going to go kind of hand in hand is just kind of based off. And then when he pulled his hands up together, it kind of seemed like he was mentioning that they're going to go hand in hand or they're going to be very similar or something that's going to be something that, you know, collaborates with the other one. So maybe we'll have to see maybe that new entrance stage or something similar to that or maybe something cooler, man, because I, I really do enjoy the play sets. Hopefully we get more of those. And hopefully it's a lot better than that performance center crap that we reviewed the other day is there any progress with us getting wcw titles for our figures they're still on their way it's just, again it's finding the the talent to put it with there was a situation where i wanted to do a figure with a wcw title that um that um suddenly we no longer have rights to because the figure of the title the the the, the, the performer gotcha he's now on a banner hanging above this place <laughs> which that'll be an inside joke to anyone who's actually here yeah. But uh, yeah, we had something planned and then that he went to somewhere else and plans changed.
Yeah. Sounds like to me, Brad, that we were going to be getting a WCW Cruiserweight Champion Chris Jericho because uh, Brett Olive did mention, shout out to Brett Olive, he said that there was a banner of Chris Jericho above the Ringside Festival, like on a little banner there. So I guess we were, it was in the works to get a WCW Chris Jericho and then they decided to scrap it because he jumped to AEW and that really sucks, man, because I would have loved to seen that. That would have been a beautiful figure with beautiful title, man. That that sucks, but maybe AEW can give us something good uh, for a current day Jericho. Obviously, they they don't own WCW, so they couldn't do that, but maybe we'll get something down the line, or maybe he'll sign a Legends deal down the line, leaving AEW. Uh, the, the, the things don't look good right now, but, you know, anything's possible in wrestling. Will Mattel do any more of the best of sets? The uh, Yeah, that's a, we, we those best of sets are a good way to make sure that the, the characters that have, like, the most crossover appeal, that, like, maybe a mom who's buying a, a figure who maybe doesn't have, like, as deep a knowledge of WWE, like the entire roster, but they know who the top people are. Right. Making sure that those characters are always in stock, in stores, on shelf, so that, you know, we can get the people that want to collect the whole roster and the people that want to just, like, sort of, like, skim the top. Obviously, guys, this is talking about the top talent series, basically, to get, you know, the Braun Strowmans, the John Cena's, the AJ Styles of the world. You know, all the parents know about these guys, and they're shopping for their kid's birthday, or they just want to get their kids something. And you go to the store, and those are the guys on the shelf, and they want to keep those top talents guys on the shelf, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, on the shelf, so that, you know, they're always available to parents and stuff that want to buy their kids something that maybe doesn't know enough about the roster, but they know, you know, the recognizable faces, such as those guys. You would think that Roman Reigns would be in those lines, but they are not so that's pretty crazy maybe they go based off of other things you know John it seems like uh, they keep the same people in the line so I mean it, it's definitely uh, something they're gonna continue and uh, hopefully they do I like to keep those elites on the shelf uh, why did uh, elite top talent 2020 gets pushed back so far that I don't know I don't know all the particulars on that one you, yeah I'm not, I don't I don't have the answers to that okay. I hate that he doesn't have an answer for this because I literally was wondering this myself. I've actually discussed this with a few friends and stuff. I don't know why this is. I would love to know this, but I am going to be hyped when they finally show him because we are getting Rey Mysterio, Jeff Hardy, Seth Rollins, and AJ Styles in this set. And one thing that does suck is they dropped Finn Balor out of the wave, man. I would have preferred him over Rey or him over AJ, I think. However, uh, I, I, I'll accept it. You know, at least it'll be something cool and new. And I love the new Rey figures, and Jeff Hardy is, is beautiful. So we'll definitely take that. How are the Ultimate Edition figures selling for Mattel? Is that line going to continue into 2020? We're developing a full line for 2020 on Ultimates. So as, as long as they keep selling, you know, we'll keep putting them out. And is it still going to be two a yeah, quarter it's, more or less? It's two a quarter. Yeah. I kind of wish that they would retool the Ultimate figures. I'm not big on the torsos. However, those figures are sick. I do like the accessories we get. I do like, you know, the double-jointed arms. I honestly feel that we should have double-jointed arms for all of our WWE Elite figures. However, you know, it is what it is. Maybe that's a stepping stone we can get to eventually. But um, I, I'm enjoying the Ultimate Series line. I'm not so big on the price point, but I still understand it. I understand all the new accessories and stuff. Almost vomited, but, you know, it is what it is. We got a Build-A-Figure uh, Danny Davis recently. It's uh, right here on display. Are there any more Build-A-Figure sets planned? The Probably the WrestleMania build -a WrestleMania Elite uh, sets will probably be Build-A-Figures. Um, it's a good way to, you know, in encourage people to buy the whole set. But it's also just a way to get char you know, characters out that we might not otherwise necessarily get out. Because you're including Build-A-Figure, you have to... There are some accessories that kind of have to be not be included in those, but it's again, it's a balance. Yeah. This is definitely very interesting. I like this a lot. The new, every single WrestleMania set apparently moving forward is going to be a Build-A-Figure, which I really like. I like this a lot. I would think that we would get maybe some different kind of characters. It seems like maybe they'll do, if they do the referee thing over and over, maybe get a Mike Kyoto or a little Nate for the Build-A-Figure or uh, maybe some different, you know, managers and stuff, or maybe, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, if you make Danny Davis, I guess anything is possible as far as like referees and, you know, different managerial spots in the backstage area. So I guess anything's possible since we got Danny Davis, but I think it'd be cool to get like a modern referee for our WWE elites. As of late, we have been seeing uh, the return of cloth accessories, which I think people are very happy about. Can we expect this trend to continue? I don't. Even, I don't think it was so much as a return. I mean, I've always included soft goods in the line for ten years. Um, so yeah, I mean, but we see, for instance, like uh, on both the Finn Balor and the Anvil, yes. we've got fabric jackets instead of plastic jackets. The Finn Balor. The reason he, that one is a cloth jacket now is because the previous leather jackets had like um, a lot of uh, surface detail, like the padding and stuff, and I didn't want to lose that. 
on the figure, so it was, it was done as a plastic jacket to um, to be able to include that detail. The la the latest the the jacket he wore here is like a, a smoother jacket, so it was something where yeah, I was able to do it as a soft good and still be accurate. Like I I try to use the most accurate way possible to um, recreate something. So if something is like a, a robe, chances are that's going to be a soft good. But if it's a jack, like if it's something like Alistair Black, right. with a lot of surface detail, that's always going to be a molded piece. Mm -hmm. It does get kind of tricky when you get into leather jackets that have a lot of detail because sometimes the, the sleeves lock into place. But as we're showing with, again, I always keep coming back to the Kyrie Sane, uh, we're finding new ways to maybe do something where if they have a signature pose and an entrance, like Sasha Banks has the, uh, the legit boss on our new upcoming ringside exclusive, we're actually you know, doing the jacket as a molded part, but the arms are pre-posed, so you can pose or doing the legit boss pose. So it's just, it's just it's, we're, we're, we're learning and evolving and just figuring out like, what are new ways we can, we can do this. Yeah. All right, so a lot to unpack right here, guys. So starting off, I, I do agree with him. Like, I don't know why somebody said the return of cloth accessories. Mattel's been giving us cloth accessories since the dawn of time, since they started making WWE figures as early as Series 1, I think. So I think that that is not true as far as, you know, the return of cloth accessories because we've always gotten them here and there. But um, I think I can speak for everybody. When he's talking about that ringside exclusive Finn Balor and he's talking about the jacket being made of rubber and then, you know, you think about the Great American Bash Sting where their arms, it's like they're trying to capture the detail and the stuff of the jacket but the arms are stuck out to the side I think that I can be I can speak for most of us when I say I would say don't even include the jacket if you can't make it cloth or you can't make it poseable I just don't like you know like the Finn Balor jacket I think it would have been cool to just release a leather jacket or a cloth jacket that's you know just like the one that we got with Triple H just like the one that we're getting with the Elite 74 Finn Balor go ahead and just make the jacket it doesn't have to have the ripples on the sleeves I don't think anybody really cares about that because you know they say that he says that he cares about accuracy and stuff so he wants to be as accurate as possible but at the same time he gives us Triple H torso for Velveteen Dream and we get uh, uh, some other questionable you know things about other figures so I don't really maybe he's talking about just accessories I'm not sure but I think I would speak for most people when I would say I, I would sacrifice a little detail on the sleeves to get a cloth jacket over including the detail on the sleeves and not being able to move Finn Balor's arm so that is just something I, I wanted to mention also the Sasha Banks that's the ringside exclusive that really does suck that the jacket is going to be rubber I do understand it again I, I know that's a, a lot of stuff like if it's like a Chris Jericho jacket or like the Alistair Black jacket I understand that you have to make that into a rubber accessory or you know a plastic accessory whatever you want to call it but I don't know um, I, I understand that but like vests are fine I think anybody would agree that vests where you can still move their arms and stuff that are still molded in plastic like AJ Styles vest for example I think that's okay to have you know plastic vests or rubber vest because you know you could still move their arms but as far as um uh, and the Alistair Black like the the horns on it obviously they can't be cloth I understand that that makes way more sense to be rubber but again it's it doesn't have sleeves on it anything with sleeves it's just really difficult they're very very difficult to pose around and um they're very hard to get off the figures anyway it kind of feels like you're gonna break them so I don't know it's just a lot to unpack, uh, unpack right there and again it is kind of give or take but in my own personal opinion I think I would rather have a cloth t-shirt um, with no entrance jacket if the entrance jacket is going to be rubber. So I would much rather just have a cloth t-shirt every single time than uh, give us a rubber jacket that you can't even move their arms. But that's just me. I don't know. Sound off down in the comment section below. This past year, there was no SummerSlam set, and it got moved into Elite 68. Yes. Will there be a SummerSlam wave in 2020? Yes. I think there is a Elite wave that will be SummerSlam themed this year. Okay. Similar but to how 68 was this year. Meaning that it will be one of the elite sets, not its own separate yes. SummerSlam yes. set. So it looks like we are going to be getting six SummerSlam figures, just like Elite Series 68, and that was probably one of the weaker sets of the year, I think. So hopefully this next year they'll make that a lot better. Um, I, I think that they could definitely improve it this year, and uh, I'm all for getting six SummerSlam figures. You know, there's some cool attires that we have not gotten. I would love to see a SummerSlam Kurt Angle from 2002. There's also some other. There's a ton of figures. A Randy Orton from SummerSlam 2004. Uh, just tons and tons of figures I'd like to see. So those are those are some options right there that you could consider. Hopefully, but. 
But uh, there there are so many different figures, and I'm okay with that. You know, as long as they're good figures, that allows for people to get some flashbacks as well. So that's good for flashback collectors, and I'm all for that. I don't think we need our own separate wave. So you want to you could give a theme to every elite line if they'd like, but then you would leave out a lot of current stuff. But I I, I think I'd be okay if every you know like main elite line had its own little uh, theme to it. I think that would be pretty cool. How has the feedback been for the chase figures in elites and basics? Will they continue, and any other plans for other assortments to have chase figures? The plan is to never make it impossible to find a figure, but sometimes stuff happens that, you know, when you have an original plan, like a slight deviation here, and a slight deviation here, and a slight deviation here, and then suddenly things are way off course. Yeah. And I would imagine the amount of figures that get pumped out, when one thing goes off course, it screws up a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's something you know, last minute changes or something happens where the, uh, you know, this is the only roster of action figures where you're kind of dealing with real people. And real people's stories change a lot more than something that's like, you know, precisely scripted. Mm -hmm. So there's always things where just like a little bit off here and a little bit off here and a little bit off here and then suddenly, whoa, we're way, you know, we're way off from where we, when, when we plan this out and then we're, we're here and we're supposed to be here. So it sounds like in the beginning, the chase figures were supposed to be a lot easier to track down than they are right now, and it seems like they inflate in price, guys. Like, you even go on ringside, it seems like they kind of, like, have went up in price depending on what figure you're trying to go after, and I know the chase fi figures, I've only found, like, the chase Shelton Benjamin, and after that, I really haven't found, I did find a, a Mustafa Ali on a toy hunt we did, which was really cool, and they only had one of them, I don't know if there's just one per case or whatever the case is, but uh, I think that, uh, I mean, they're not impossible to track down, I did get the Dolph Z Ziggler online for like 40 but it seems like they're twice the price, which uh, I, I mean, I guess it's cool that Mattel's trying to make it easier to obtain, but it doesn't seem like they are easier to obtain, but uh, it's always going to be like that when you make chase figures and, you know, collector's edition figures and stuff like that, but hopefully they just, you know, they improve on their uh, distribution of those figures, because it seems like uh, even like if your store gets a brand new set, it doesn't seem like they always get a chase variant, at least in stock, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just never first. Is uh, getting the dilapidated boat back into an elite line your greatest accomplishment of the year? I think it's one of them, especially when we considered, you know, we spent we spent the tooling dollars on a big deluxe play set, and then it got, it kind of went away. It's like the opportunity to bring it back was something that um, unexpected, but uh, unexpectedly great. Yeah. So it's I'm glad. I'm glad it happened. Yes, I am very excited that we got the dilapidated boat, Brad, but we need the mower of lawns, and we are also getting Vanguard 1, so that's also very epic. Maybe they could release that Bray Wyatt or something and give us the mower of lawns. Like, give us that red pants Bray Wyatt. I still really wanted that Bray Wyatt as well. But I really want to see the mower of lawns, man. I know that Toys R Us going out of business really hurt that 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 set. That is basically what killed the set, that ultimate deletion set. So um, we're still going to get some work in with the dilapidated boat. You think I'm not going to get the dilapidated boat in the pick fed somehow? I don't know, Brad. We're going to have to find out about that. Probably be a while, but you know, once we get that dilapidated boat, this the clo uh, you know closer step will be to getting the dilapidated boat on pick fed television for MDT Live. But that pretty much does it for our interview with Bill McKenna and Mattel and Ringside Fest guys. A huge shout out to Ringside Collectibles for the video and the footage for this interview of Bill McKenna. Also for the footage for Ringside Fest and all that good jazz. Um, it was very uh, cool to react to this. It was my first time watching it. I had a lot of fun reacting to it, and I hope that you know we get more questions. I, I would love to sit. I would love to just sit down with Bill and just talk to him for like an hour and a half. That would be really fun to do. I would love to interview him and you know put that up on the channel. Maybe we can ha make that happen one day in the future or something. But I enjoyed it. I think it was awesome. If you guys stayed all the way through, I really appreciate it again. And if you would like to watch the interview in full, I pretty much included every question. There was probably two or three questions I left out just for the sake of time. Uh, it was probably be up to 40 minutes or so if we didn't, but I tried my best to, you know, limit it. I know we went over 30 minutes here, but I did want to put this up and get it up to you guys and you, you know, see it for yourselves because it didn't seem like a lot of people got to see it, and I figured that you guys would want to see that. So if you want to see the full interview, go to the link in the description. Also, huge shout out to Ringside Collectibles, guys. If you'd like to pick up any figures or, you know, check out their website, go to ringsidecollectibles.com. Use the promo code MDTOYS. Save 10%, pick up some epic figures, and get in on all their sales. Tons of pre-orders and stuff over there. And uh, we're going to call it a day here. But thank you guys so very much for watching the reaction and the interview with Bill McKenna. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.